Okay, here's our video today. It's on the Nazis, radio waves, and the ionosphere part one. Specifically, we're going to talk about Nazi Germany, how Nazi Germany used radio waves for their bombing of England and in World War II. And we'll also talk about how Britain countered, they used radio waves to counter that. So it's very important to understand radio waves to understand what the Nazis did, right? And we'll talk about that. So we have a little science, a little social studies going on here. But in order to do that, we need to first talk about the ionosphere. So in part one, we'll talk about the ionosphere. Part two, we'll talk about the radio waves. And part three, we'll put it all together. So let's go into the ionosphere. All right, so here the, are the layers of our atmosphere. We live in the troposphere, as you can see down here. And let's get a pen going on here. We'll use red. Why not? So as you can see, as you go about 10 miles up, and this is just estimates, right? We go 10 miles up, we hit the ozone layer, O3, the ozone layer, protects us from the UV radiation. And remember, uh, UV, if you do know, UV is also electromagnetic radiation that we'll talk about because radio waves are electromagnetic radiation. And UV stands for ultraviolet rays electromagnetic radiation which basically is just light so radio waves are light we'll talk about electromagnetic radiation in a minute so in these here as you can see now we get into the stratosphere i just crossed it out crossed out the stratosphere but that's where our commercial planes travel in the stratosphere you can see it's getting colder as we go up and then we get into the mesosphere it gets really cold right not that much oxygen in here. And then we get into the Kármán line, and the Kármán line is the start of outer space. It's debatable, but that's what people send it. Some scientists think that's the start of outer space. And now we're in the thermosphere. And in the thermosphere, look at this. Look how hot it is in the thermosphere, about 86 miles up. It's called the thermosphere for a reason. Thermo means heat. So it's very hot. It's the hottest layer of the atmosphere. And then, of course, we have the exosphere. But in the thermosphere, in the lower level of the thermosphere, we have the ionosphere. So it's part, it's part of the thermosphere. And the ionosphere is electrically conductive. It's electrically conductive. In other words, there's charge there. Conductive. There we go. There are ions there, and ions are charged atoms. So let's talk about ions, what they are. Charged atoms. So the ionosphere is electrically conductive, and it is conductive because of these ions. So let's explain that. So if we want to draw a sun, why not put a little yellow there? There's a little sun. So the sun's rays, the radiation from the sun, we should change that, right? Change the color. We don't want yellow. The radiation from the sun. Right, the radiation from the sun does something to the atoms, right? It knocks out electrons, right? And if it knocks out electrons from their atoms, you're going to get ions. So let's just, let's just bring out a picture of an oxygen atom. All right, so here you can see oxygen, which we breathe, right? We breathe in oxygen. We also breathe in nitrogen, right? But it's oxygen that we need. So we have, it has eight electrons in its cloud, or these rings or orbits, whatever you want to call them. And it also has eight protons. So it has an equal amount of electrons and protons. It also has eight neutrons. So right now, there is no charge on this oxygen. But if, let's just say one of these electrons leaves the atom, now we have more protons. And since we have more protons, and you should know that protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons have no charge. So if we lose an electron, now we have an oxygen atom that is positive. It's a positive ion. It has a charge to it because it has more protons. If it had more electrons, it would be a negative ion. So let's, let me draw one. Let's just draw. What happens, let's clear this out. What would happen if another electron joins? Let's say right there. And remember, there on the second shell, the second orbital, there is room for two more. 
So let's say this electron joined. What would this be? All right, so we know it's oxygen. Now it has more electrons, so it would be negatively charged. It would be a negative ion. Now, if they, again, if they had the same electrons and the same protons, it would be neutral. There would be no charge. So in the ionosphere, you have these charged ions. And we should just say ions because ions are charged. So we don't have to add that extra term. Now, because it is electrically conductive, let's get our pen back. Let's use purple. The um, ionosphere is like a blanket. So let's just make our little curvature of the Earth here, of the ozone. Not the ozone, but the ionosphere. So when radio waves, and of course, this is what uh, Maxwell, James Maxwell, had theories about this that was proven by a man named Hertz. And that name Hertz will come up again. So what will what the ionosphere will do is when a radio wave hits the ionosphere, it will bounce back. It'll bounce back. So it's like a like a mirror, like it's reflecting the radio wave. Let's get a green color here. So with any light, right here we have a radio wave, which is light. So this is the ray. Well, let's do it this way. This is the ray of incidence array of incidence, and it'll be reflected in the same angle as the ray of inflection, the reflected ray, which also happens in visible light. So this is very important now because if we can shoot a radio wave to the ionosphere, it will reflect back and we can create radio transmissions. However, not all radio waves bounce off the ionosphere. So when we're talking about radio, specifically AM radio, amplitude modulation, which we'll talk about in another video, AM radio has hertz between five, and here's the word hertz now, because we use hertz, kilohertz, right? So AM has kilohertz between 500 and 1700. And those types of frequencies will be reflected. When you think about FM radio, though, FM has higher frequencies, and those frequencies don't get reflected. Nowadays, you know, in the 1930s, they didn't have satellites, but nowadays, these rays can also be reflected off satellites, just in general. So again, we have the ionosphere here is like a blanket that will bounce off certain um, radio waves, AM radio waves, not FM radio waves. So this was just a basic introduction. We're going to talk more about the certain wavelengths that will penetrate the ionosphere. And then we'll also talk about now the how the Nazis used radio waves and how the British countered them in the next video. By the way, if you turn on your radio transmitter, let's say, for example, you know, 1010 wins. I know it's a New York radio station, 1010 wins. It's that's the amount of hertz it's broadcasting at, at 1010 hertz. So 1010 wins radio will bounce off the ionosphere, it will be reflected back. But if you think of some FM stations in your area, they will not be reflected. So if we want to know the, the difference, AM radio could travel longer distances than FM. But with FM radio, you can get a lot more information. That's why it's great for music. But we'll talk about that in the next video.